what they leave me How it grieves me When I see a push our culture aside I travel the region Have it far away Have it my opinion I am proud to say We are live at the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, and we want to welcome you to a very special production for St. Cecilia's Day 2017. We are looking at a 60-year history of um, calypso making in St. Lucia. This special production is called From the Days of Terror to Pep. 1957 to 2017 and as you can well imagine this is a 60-year history of Calypso in St. Lucia these are stories that must be told I'll introduce you to my guest in just a moment we also have a small live audience we'll be hearing from them as well as part of that production but what I need to tell you is that our stories need to be tell need to be told um, so often we look for the history and we can't find it at least not immediately and it calls for a lot of searching we're hoping by this special production would we'll be able to provide those who are interested in the history of saint lucia the history of music in saint lucia a, 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 a rich resource a source of information that can provide you with what is it you need to know about how the music has grown and developed over the 60 years and so with this in mind I want to introduce you first of all to Mr. Mr. Pancras, Pancras Theodore and um, we know him most of all as a terror welcome sir thank you we also have with us Mr. Mark Phillip who is known as Lord Jackson and we have of course Dr. Pep or Pep um, Aloysius Brett. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time off to be with us here. We really appreciate your presence because we know we ha you have stories to tell and these stories need to be heard by us. So Tara, first of all, I want to ask of you, when did you realize that you had this great interest in, in Calypso? Well, this started from very early, you know, I, I must have been about, I was still in, prim in primary school. Uh, so we're talking about the early 50s. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I was still in primary school. And I'm, uh, my stepfather then got me a, bought me a guitar. He bought me this guitar because I had found an old guitar that he had a long time ago. I had one string and I was playing all kinds of songs on this one string. <laughs> so he bought me a guitar. Six strings and I can't play anything on the six strings. Well, I'm accustomed to playing on one string. Right. And eventually I learned to play it myself. And, but I was really m more interested in, in Calypso. You know, from that time I used, to, I used to play all, all I used to be able to sing all the Calypsos by, you know, those at the time, Spoiler, Car Caruso, Sparrow, Kitsch. All these, I used to be singing Calypsos in school, in the primary school I started. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to St. Mary's, I used to be singing at, at the school all the time. Mm -hmm. But at that time, there wouldn't have been competitions, right? No. 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 Okay. We were just, we're just, we're just enjoying ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just enjoying we're ourselves. Just, uh, as a matter of fact, at that time, Kachina was not even in, in the Caribbean. He was still in, in England. Mm -hmm. And he used to send down his records from England on this, the 78s at the time. He used to send them down here. You know, and that's how we used to, to, to hear Kachina sing. Mm -hmm. you know, because he, he, was, he, was resi he resided in England. And it, it, it wasn't down here at all, but we had Kitchener, we had um, uh, Lord Beginner. I don't know if anybody people remember that that ever anybody here ever heard that name, Lord Beginner. <laughs> he's, <laughs> the, he's the one who made the song "Cricket Lovely Cricket." Oh, there's always thing is Kitchener, but it was a Lord Beginner. I know him. He's the one who made who did, made that song, mm -hmm. you know. And then of course we had the older guys right here in the Caribbean. We had Spoiler. Who, Caruso, Caruso, and there was, um, you know, Sparrow, Kitsch, Melody. Mm -hmm. as, a f as a matter of fact, Melody really was my, my favorite. And I used, to be, I used to sing 
almost exactly like Melody. You know, my voice was almost, I copied Melody's voice almost to a T, mm -hmm. you know. And then when I decided to go into Calypso, when, it, when it, you know, Calypso matured, and I'm, uh, uh, then I started hearing the mighty terror, one of the, the man who has one of the sweetest voices in Calypso. I really love his voice, and I named myself Terror after him. We'll talk a little more about that and the history of you entering um, competition in St. Lucia, but I want to hear from Jackson. Jackson, when did you start um, Calypso here in, in St. Lucia? Uh, actually, I must tell the audience, my father is a Trinidadian. I have brothers and sisters in Trinidad. One of my brothers is, is one of the top pan arranger. So he has a lot of music in him. Mm -hmm. And he has written a couple songs for Black Stalin also. But I left here at, in 1958. I went to Trinidad. And while I was in Trinidad, you know, I heard Calypso and I fell in love with Calypso. So I started hanging around by the tent. So the original Young Brigade Calypso tent that ran by Sparrow, I find myself there as the man packing the chairs, oh. sweeping the hall after everything finished. Mm -hmm. So I fall in love with Calypso there. Then composer became my friend. So I used to be at his home and he playing his guitar and we crumbing, we crumbing. By that time, I come back home only to find NCDC at that time was running the Calypso competition. They used to have just a semi-final and a final. That time about seven Calypsonians. I think that time Dix had left and gone to Canada already. Mm -hmm. And with that seven Calypsonians, the same seven Calypsonians that go to the semi-final will go to the finals, <laughs> <laughs> right? So I said to myself, hey, hey, that's about in Trinidad have Calypso 10 starting from 1st of January until February. So why is so, why do I have Calypso 10 here? So that time I called Crusoe. It was Crusoe. It was Killer. Mm -hmm. It was Killer, Crusoe, myself. Um, well, well, but about four or five of us. Mm -hmm. So we sat on the square. That was our office every night. We used to sit on the square or if not in front of Barclays Bank. That is where we used to have our meetings. So I tell you about- on Bridge Street. Uh, right. right. Mm -hmm. That is First Caribbean Bank now. Mm -hmm. So I told the guys about how tent run in Trinidad for a whole month before Carnival. So they said, well, Jaco, if you know how to do it, well, go ahead and do it and we are there with you. That time, Big Six was the orchestra around. Pele used to be the lead guitar in that band. So I went and talked to Pan. I tell Pan how it goes. Pan Andrew. Pan Andrew. Right. right. So he tell me, well, go ahead and organize it. We will play for you all. I said, but how are you going to charge us? They say, whatever you all make, 50 50. Mm -hmm. That was a good deal. That time, only 50 cents in the way charging in the town. <laughs> Sometime after show, we make two hundred dollars. Fifty cents would be equivalent to like forty dollars, right? At that, at time. that time. Oh yes. yes, at that time. So we started the tent. When the show finished, when we people and sometimes seventy dollars, we made a little seventy dollars for ourselves. We go by Elwin. Elwin used to have a jute box. Had a body with a jute box. The five of us, six of us, will go there, buy a bottle of. Cockade, that was the name of the room <laughs> at that time, at Coke. And we sit down there and we enjoy ourselves there, we drink, and, and that time things going well. Okay, from 50 cents, you go to 75 cents, 75 cents, you go up to a dollar, you know, and that's how it keeps going, going. So after four years later, I said, I said, but in China, they have what you call Calypso Association. Why we don't have an association? By that time, Carlo joined my tent. Mm -hmm. But when he joined the tent, the song he was singing, I realized that is a song from Trinidad. I said, I said, look, this tent, we have to have our own songs. Mm -hmm. We can't follow people's tune. That time, oh, the fellow I'm trying to remember, he died. Owen oh, Charles. Oh, Cobra. Cobra. Cobra win road match with a tune. And 
I come from Trinidad, I know the song from, from these old fellas unknown and, mm -hmm. and dragon and all them fellas. The song, the song is um, like, it says, Fire engine, water the road. Mama, your tree is burning down. Fire engine, water the road. So he takes you and turns it around. Yeah, he says. is burning down, like thing. <laughs> 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 so I, I, but why am I busy, eh? At that time. Why am I, why am I busy? So anyhow, things went on so. We decided to form the association. All right, we formed the association. Who is going to be president? Nobody don't want to be president. So we see we have to look for a president. Buster Inglis mm -hmm. had a bar under the CDC. We went to Buster. I went to Buster. I talked to Buster about it. He agreed. He took the association role. So by that time now, people start paying $2 and thing to come and help us. But what was happening? which I did not like at all. Buster he used to take the drinks from his bar. <laughs> and the bar, money goes to his room shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we get a lot of licks already, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, so Calypso start to grow. So more we're talking more. only now about the association. We haven't talked about tents yet, no? Not really. Not really. Not really. So maybe what I'm we will do, to tents. yes, we'll come back to oh, you okay. in just a moment, but let's introduce Pep. You are a child of the 80s, right? Mm. So that's quite far um, removed <laughs> from, <laughs> from the gentleman that we have heard Maybe from the, the <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a long time, it, a long time away. It, 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 I was number number you know. surprised that you <laughs> entered Calypso because I do, re do remember you as a musician. In fact, right. your, your group at the time, together with guys like Dovain, remember you all recorded the first RSL music, music. jingle, That's right? right? Yeah. And, I was surprised that you were actually involved in Calypso at the time that you were. Tell us, you started around 80, 84, 85? No, well, actually, my first Calypso, I sang at St. Mary's College um, uh, in 1978. We decided, we used to have um, little shows in the school, mm -hmm. and um, one of the, the, the um, teachers there reintroduced the choir and everything, and then music started, you know happening in the school. We had Dover at that time, we had myself, we had Adley, we had even Buffalo was in a junior form at that time playing and we decided to have a school band. So the idea came up to have a Calypso competition in 1978. So as a matter of fact some of us who were in the school band ourselves were singing. But it happened on the day of the show now um, we had we didn't get the instruments to play. It was a problem to get the instruments. It was from um, Babzi at, 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 mm -hmm. at, at, at um, Minard Hill. Paul, Paul no, Babzi. Babzi. Um, Purple Haze. Purple Haze. Oh, okay. Right. We, that's where we used to rehearse, but we couldn't get the instrument to the college, so we decided no, we're having our show, and everybody's going to sing without backup band. And that year I sang After Eight You Late, which went on to. To, well, I won that year in 1978. Well, it became a very, very popular song at that time. And uh, the following year, we decided to continue. But I was writing exams that year, so I wasn't so actively involved. But as the defending king, I had to go and sing, which I did. And uh, that year, Buffalo, then the Buffalo mm -hmm. um, won, and I placed second. And that was it at that time. When I went to A level the following year. Um, I decided to, to for that that we organize a Calypso competition there in 1980. At that time, uh, it was Damian Greaves. At that time, myself, and there were quite a, about five of us on the show at that time. I can't remember the others, but I, it was myself and Damian Greaves and about three other guys. We decided to have the first show there, and uh, I happened to win that year again. Uh, I sang something about Fredo, <laughs> calling Fredo. It's a song, a, a song I wrote about the principal at that time. That's the that's a uh, Frederick, um, Nicholas Frederick, yes, right. yeah. a very stern oh. principal at that time. <laughs> and I know there were little jokes about him that I put into a song, and I, I mean it went well with with the, with the, with the students. So I won that year, and, and, um, and Damian Greaves uh, came second. And um, the second year we didn't have anything because it was our mm -hmm. examination year, so we didn't concentrate on that. So I went in to teach right after I left A level and the following year I decided to go to Barbados to do my first degree in, in natural science. So when I, when I went there, they, 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 
they were having music uh, um, shows, entertainment, they used to have island nights and all this sort of thing going on there. And we decided when I came in now to get involved in doing Calypso there. Now there had been Calypso before, but there was mm -hmm. a lull and we decided to revive it. And um, well, to cut a long story short, I spent three years then I won all three years. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, I decided, well, when I, when I come back home, I will get into the Calypso. But before all that, I mean, I used to be into pop music. Yeah. I, I, I did a lot of pop music. I wrote a lot of pop songs, and I used to sing with my brother Pet, um, Petrus as the Petals. And what we did, we did a lot of um, Air Supply, um, the Everly Brothers, Paul, um, Paul Simon and Simon and Garfunkel. These were the songs we sang. And we were regulars at the Queen shows. So, for example, I remember the night, he, uh, the time he, he sang Guy Love Dance. We were on the same stage, but he wouldn't remember me. <laughs> he won that uh, because he performed at the Queen Show in the Banana Shed, and we sang, but I sang as uh, as the duet, the petals. But we were regular on those shows, and you know mm -hmm. they used to have the bodybuilding shows and all these sort of things, and I used to sing regularly at that. But when I came back from um, studying in 1985, that, uh, that was um, in August, September 85. The following year, I decided to jump into the arena and at least. See, see what it was worth, you know. We'll hold that thought and come back to you when we take a short break. Well, um, audience, I'm sure you have, you've gotten a lot of um, mind joggers. <laughs> memory, down memory lane so far. We will be making um, time available for you to sort of share your own experiences with the um, gentlemen who are with us this, this, this evening. But before we go into our second segment, we can just have some um, extempo music we will um we will ask uh, Tara to um give us one of one of one one of the songs that would have given you the edge over all the others I went to Moscow on a donkey, one of Stalin got straight to stop me. I went to Moscow on a donkey, one of Stalin got straight to stop me. Well, I gave him the actum as he wished. He said, what you selling? I say, salt fish. He said, well, today is back and all. Stalin in the town playing carnival. I say, you're talking and you're pindish. It's live and pindish. A trunksy man and swath diminish. Stalin see Kalinsky. Diminish Stalin say to send back the salt fish. <laughs> <laughs> when he saw I was talking Russian, the man put a passage in my hand. He said, Which way to find Stalin? I say, Man, what are you saying? I say, Man, I ask you a question. He said, No, understand me, not a friend. I say, Well, if you cannot understand, where can I go sing it in Russian? I feel to kick you in your pindish, in slave pindish, a trunksy man in sloth, diminish, Stalin see Kalinsky, diminish, Stalin said to send back the surface. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Tara, who would have arranged your music, you know, for for you? Yeah, well it was um the band was a Carlos Mins. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I played with Mins in the other band, a dance band. We were the, the house band for Gaiety, mm -hmm. Gaiety Club at that time. I played guitar with me. Okay. They used to arrange my music. Who, were there any other arrangers that you can remember apart from Mr. Mintz? Um, uh, let me see now. Clement Springer did some arrangements. Also in the band, also the police time. band. Police band also, mm -hmm. and Toto. Also with the police band. Toto, yeah. Right, yeah. As a matter of fact, Toto taught me to play the trumpet. <laughs> Well, this is our special program coming to you live from the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center. And we're looking at 60 years of making of Calypso here in St. Lucia, a special program for St. Cecilia's Day, which, as you know, is observed on the 22nd of November. Now, we have three distinguished gentlemen, and I like to think of it as waves of Calypso. They represent different times of, you know, um, Calypso making in St. Lucia. For example, we have Terra, who has won the crown from, since 19, from 1957 to 1966, eight times, right? Yeah, about that, yeah. And we also have on the other end, 
um, Pep, who has also won the crown eight times. In between, we have Calypso, a monarch, um, 19, that will be 87? Uh, 81. 81. 81, Jackson. So these men represent different times of the music of Calypso here in St. Lucia. So, and that spans a, a, a period of some 60 years. When we um, left to hear some music, Pep, you were talking about your first entry into national competition here in St. Lucia. Yes, in 1985, um, when I came back from Barbados, I thought seriously about going into the Calypso Arena. And uh, of course, I came in late in uh, sep around September that year, so I had to wait until the following year, 1986. Um, <coughs> I must point out, when I was in Barbados, I used to be getting little bits and pieces of the Calypso scene down here. I, I bought a, a radio, you know, this shortwave M MHW, I, I, mm -hmm. this thing. And I used to get little bits and pieces of, of, of Radio Car um, Caribbean mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, and I used to be hearing bits and pieces. And I remember um, hearing um, Invader with the Yellow Man and Mother's Hold on to your chair and those years. And I said, and, and at that time, he was fresh on the scene. Mm -hmm. And there was a big thing about the Invader at that time. And his, I was, mask was his mask was, yes. yes. Something, something different. So I, I said to myself, I'm hoping when I get back home, if one day I get back, I'd have to try and see if I could challenge him. You know, I used to, uh, because at that time, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love the change that he brought in the music at the time. It was a little different. So when I came in, I decided in 1986 to come on, on the uh, Calypso scene. So I joined at that time the Uprising Calypso Tent, mm -hmm. which was at that time Invader, with Invader Chassis, um, uh, Lord help me and those guys here at the time. So I joined the tent and that year, I sang um, Pumping Aids and Political Squabble. And to my amazement, well, I, I, I was first run up to Invader. At that time, nobody could have touched the Invader. You know, so coming first was not a bad thing for me. I felt good. So I decided, well, the following year, I mean, I'll have to try and, I mean, I'd, I'd play, play in first run up the first time. You had to stay, in, stay mm -hmm. in, in, on the scene. So this, the following year, I started. A very lukewarm season until I'm um, at St. Mary's College. I thought I came back to teach at St. Mary's College and Ron Sion was teaching there at the time. So one day in the staff room, he came up to me and said, Pep, you know, you, want, you, came, you came in and you, 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 you play some first runner up, you know? If we work together, I suspect we can win the crown. At that time, I never knew him as a writer. You know, I, I mean, I knew he wrote for Jackson, but I mean, as a Calypso writer, I didn't really know him into that. Because, I mean, he was doing science at the school. I never thought of him in the art. <laughs> so we, we sat down and we said, well, I said, well, okay, there's nothing to lose if I play sports. Run up. I can't get worse than that. It's, I have to, do, you know, we have to get better. So one day he came up to the staff room and he said, he has an idea. I said, well, somebody had sung about, everybody sang about, uh, you know, abortion and, the, you know, the, from the perspective of the, 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 the mother, mm -hmm. you know. Why don't we take a different as a look at it and look at it from the child, you know? I said, that's, that, that's a good idea, you know? So we sat and he thought about it and then we said, he said, well, work on a thing. At that time I went by courts, I got a little Casio, <laughs> a Casio keyboard. Um, I bought that courts and I sat home and I started putting a few chords together and the following day I came to him and I said, I think I have a melody. So we sat down and we listened to it. He listened to it and he said, mm, that's good. He satisfied. He went home and within one night, the following day, he came back with two verses. Mm -hmm. And we ran for it and he said, that's good. We, we ran it by the, the, the staff members there. He said, boy, everybody was in love with it. They, 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 people were getting um, cold sweat, you know, and chills and bumps when they heard the song. So we decided to finish the, the third verse and we went, we went with it on the quarterfinals night. It was quarterfinals at Gaty Cinema. So we sang, I, sang, I sang it as my second song. When I sang that song, I can vividly remember everybody went quiet. Quiet. Nobody saying a thing. And people tell me, boy, they're getting ghost pimples. The same effect it had in the staff room. When I finished singing, there was a, I mean, everybody went crazy. And when I was walking off stage, there was Invader standing up with his friends. Um, <laughs> um, 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 what's his name? Um, 
um, uh, Cabs and, and, and Cabs. yeah, Cabs was his writer at that time. Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, Cab Lawrence. And um, the, the guy is this over here, um, Stryker. 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 When I was walking off, I saw Stryker was talking to Invader and he said, I, I actually watched him did Invader. <laughs> <laughs> he did have to invade and I said, boy, how oh, I got them. <laughs> so we went on from there. We, I placed the quarterfinals and we went down to semifinals. And uh, I mean, it was our first, when we came out on that night, it was our first major intro mm -hmm. introduction to the presentation. We had to find a way to present that song because, mind you, at that time, Invader was the boss in presentation. I mean, he came out. I was always amazed at how he would be so creative in, in presenting his songs. So we had to think of a way to to um, get at him and so we brought in Giovanni Santuma. It wasn't Luigi at the time, it was mm -hmm. his brother Giovanni who came in and he decided to when he heard the song he decided to design the costume for us and we went on stage and that was history, you know. We we, we won that year and I think it was a a, a, a major blow for Invader at the time because he was really re uh, I mean ranking high and he was the man at the time. And uh, I mean having won that year Thing just went. I mean, I, I mean, I was grateful to the introduction with Siona. We decided, well, we're going to work out a little contract between ourselves. M mind your verbal contract. <laughs> 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 and uh, the following year, we came with Ambagoj. <coughs> Ambagoj, we started off as a real mess. If, you know, I first sang it at the town hall. And nobody could understand what I was singing. Because the, at that time, <laughs> this was not the type of calypsos that you were hearing at the time. And people are wondering uh, what I come, I come saying, oh, my gosh, guys, the fellas running. I mean, <laughs> I got a very terrible response the first night. So I said, nah, we have to get a man for violin on stage at our next performance. So we got a guy um, from Cicero to play the violin first. When we brought him in, he's playing violin on stage. Nobody can hear the violin in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the, the band was playing loud and he, the, the violin was not mic'd. So nobody was here, and again, people didn't, they didn't understand what it was about, you know, the, the whole. Mm -hmm. So by the time it, we reached quarterfinals, we had to go to Barbados, we had to send to Barbados to get one of these mics, because it, it wasn't available here. The, 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 the mic that the you get, the clip on yeah, mic. Yeah. So we got one from Barbados, somebody sent it down for us. And he was able to be heard on that stage, and from that time, I think he took over the show. Mm -hmm. Every time that song played, I mean, when that violin started playing, boy, it's, I, I mean, the place used to go wild. But I suspect it was more, the, because he had a little gimmick about him that people used to freak out when he was p p playing on stage, you know. And um, that just took the, I mean, from that, everybody, be, I guess people began, began to understand what the song was about. And uh, that song went all the way to the finals and, and, and won. The one for me, you know? Well, we can say something about the acoustics at the town hall. All of it goes to the back, <laughs> you know? Right. And so when, um, you know, um, people who have played always complain that, you know, the sound was not projected towards the audience, but towards right. the, the back. But at that time, you mean that Sion dropped Jackson in terms of writing for him? <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Well, I, don't, I, I, I cannot say whether he dropped him because... And some, I, do, I, I like to cut in there. Some yes. of my ideas went there. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know something I want, to, I want to mention? Listening to Peple, I, I'm looking at how, how, how much similarity there was in the way we both started. Mm -hmm. I was, a, I was a, a, a schoolboy at the time. I was at St. Mary's College. I was in Form 5. And I decided I'm going to go and sing Calypso. Don't forget, I was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, which surprised me because at that time... My brothers didn't take too kindly <laughs> exactly, to that at all. Exactly, right. That's what I was so thinking. First of all, mm -hmm. you know, I went and I went and sing Calypso. I went to the competition. I won the competition. And I came back and I got, I got killed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> going, and play, going and sing Calypso without permission. <laughs> Taking part in carnival without permission. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, after I won the crown, I got killed for that. <laughs> because yeah. I was, and, but then afterwards... They started to warm up to it, you know, and I used to sing in the assembly hall. We had an assembly hall at the time. Mm -hmm. In the assembly hall at the end, of, in every end of tomb, I used to have a concert in the assembly hall. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the brothers will allow that. Yeah, by the time I got mm -hmm. to St. Mary's, the, the name that we, we, we kept hearing was Aquila. Aquila. And, and, Aquila. Um, Andre, Andre yeah. Arthur. He was, he was the one, because you know, that people spoke about. Mm -hmm. But how did you get around, you know, um, from the... the um, 
because by the time the lack of interest by the bro the presentation brothers. Oh, I just I, I just continued singing during during lunchtime with the guys around. Eventually, the brothers, they, well, they invited me to sing for them at the, at the brothers' house. Oh, okay. I guess they wanted to hear what kind of song they were singing, mm -hmm. what it was all about, and they thought it was all, all you know, trash and, vulgar. And, and vulgar things, you know, but it wasn't that. Because, first of, for example, I sang about the, you know, the, the strike and the valley. That time, sugar, people don't know the saying, that's too, too long ago. <laughs> sugar strike in the valley and stuff like this. And then I sang, but then when I was, at that time, I, I, was, already, I, had become a, I was already a master. I was, I was, yeah, because you're already taught, teaching. You're taught, yeah. Right, yeah, I was already teaching, and then when they kind of fell off with me, it was when I went and sang Wabin Government. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were not too amused. <laughs> Why was that? Uh, they, they just took the song wrongly. Let me tell you. If I but I think you know that the word Wabin has a, a certain you know? connotation, right? <laughs> that, that, it was just, <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, but they didn't listen to the song. It's after they listened to it, they realized what I was what I was talking okay. about. Okay, right, yeah. You know? And then, but you know, this this really the similarity kind of struck me. Okay, you know? I want to hear from Jackson. You were you were the first person to introduce tents in Saint Lucia. Who were the persons? that you remember forming the first tent, veterans? What's his name? I just called his name a while ago. Crusoe, Crusoe. Kelly, myself. Um, Desper? No, Desper, Desper was, was not in the first tent. No. Desper was not in the first tent. Cairo would have been there. Cairo was not in the first tent okay. either. The first tent that opened was about five of us. Mm -hmm. It was myself, Kelly, Crusoe, Kila, mm -hmm. Kila, Mortimer. And Mortimer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Leon George. And that's when the competition right. began, right? Then the competition started. But I'll tell you something. I have a long history in that kind of thing. I don't, there are things I wouldn't like to say here today. Because I go through a lot of problems. What? Because you right? can't remember, or because microphone cut out in competition about yeah. eight times on me. The what? Microphone cut out about eight times on me. Mm -hmm. Every time I reach in the competition, the mic cutting out. Uh oh. Right? Until until uh, when explainer came here to Saint Lucia, he's my friend. I know him, so I telling him the same thing I telling you. He said, "Gaston, well, sing about it." I said, "Well, you write the song." <laughs> he tell me, "Gaston, just buy me three joints." You have a tape recorder? I said yes. <laughs> you have a tape recorder? I said yes. We went by the beach. And I lied. And when the man starts to sing, Tell me, tell me, I want to know Why Lord Jackson and Lucky so? In Calypso, I am the pioneer. I promote in Calypso ten every year. But still they're treating me with scant courtesy. I want to know why I bad Lucky. <laughs> in 74, as I open my mouth, whoop, just so, the microphone got out. Why? Why? When I drop that by, I see the whole place gone mad. I see I have them this year. Mm -hmm. But only to find out, the guy who was working with the band, carrying the instrument, preparing the instrument, is my good friend, this is cousin. Mm -hmm. And the competition that time between Carol and myself, Pili was not singing yet, eh? getting to find out, he, he himself come back and tell me that, <laughs> is he that was messing me up all that time? <laughs> oh, oh. A, guy, a guy named Ezekiel. But today when I pass in by the market, when I see him, he see me, he asks me a dollar, I ain't giving it to him. <laughs> <laughs> No. So it's not bad lucky, you were bad lucky. I was really bad lucky. I don't know about four or eight times in my cafe, always cutting out, cutting out, cutting out. By then. But and that, that, that year, when I went on stage, boy, I just like an electrician. I have tires, knife, everything. And I had the bank to stop. And I go, don't fix any wires, man. <laughs> that year, I came second. Good. I came second that year. I see they give King Barry the crown. Yes. <laughs> but as a Calypsonian, we had um, at least we're coming now, moving from your time yes. as, as okay. the reigning king. We had Barry, we had Desper, we had mm -hmm. um, Caro, mm -hmm. etc. 
Mm -hmm. What was it like working with these guys? Well, when Despa came in, Calvary came in, things started to change. Mm -hmm. In what way? Well, the tents started to get bigger mm -hmm. and we started making more money. By that time, we come and we changed president. We had Vitalis, a guy named Vitalis. I think it was David Vitalis. Mm -hmm. Vitalis, mm -hmm. him Vitalis. Yeah. Big fella. Big, Big fella, I think he poisoned himself or something. Though. Mm -hmm. Well, he had he, but he went, when the association itself started to make money, is when Lorna mm -hmm. became the president. And after Lorna become Egbert Volney. So let's just talk about Terra. Um, you're, you being a college boy, and Calypso at that time was not, you know, as yeah. we know it. It was a different, um, you know, ball game all to, altogether. Definitely. What was the reception like for you coming into Calypso at the time? It was mixed. Mixed? It was mixed. The, the guys who were, who were singing at the time were Cobra, um, uh, Scrub, you know, a couple of other guys. But the fellow, first thing they watched me, some music I've been playing, yeah, college. Some music, mm -hmm. music college music I've been playing, I've been chanting. So college boys would no. not be considered That's right. Calypsonians. Yeah, no. Too educated yeah. for it? I, I, I uh, guess so, I, I, you mm -hmm. know. But, and then again, on the other side, they were saying, what, 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 made, what, what is this man going to do singing <laughs> Calypso? Made in, made in, made in college, made should be singing Calypso. That, mm -hmm. that is not his thing. That is not like his thing. Be you know, yeah. And, and nearly all, this, all the guys were, were in the boys club, Belgrave. Because when we started singing, that's where we used to have our, our, that's where we used to have our shows. Mm -hmm. In Belgrave's club, in the Conway, you know. But then eventually when it started, after, you know, things really started picking up. What, what happened is that with me coming into singing, they brought in a new, a, a new crowd, you know, and more people started listening to Calypso, especially, well, I think not, not what happened is that instead of just the one boom, boom, one verse song and this sort of thing, I started bringing in real Calypso singing mm -hmm. about events, singing about, you know, what things that are taking place. Because one of the big things at that time when I, the, there was this sugar strike in the valley where, you know, all this thing, people get killed and this sort of thing, you know, I sang about that. I started singing things like, like I told you, I sang about the, the Wabian government, which is the, the, the double attempt t mm -hmm. type thing, you know. And so the standard really, really, really started to move up, Okay, you know. Well, and, when and we come back, we will uh, discuss a little more about, um, you know, your involvement in the competition mm. at, at your time. Okay. And why is it that you were able to, you know, dominate the scene at the time? I was good, man. You were good. <laughs> 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 but we also want to look at your, your rivalry with Zandoli. Yeah. Yes, at the time and the controversial um, uh, song, which yeah, sort yeah. of led you to to move out of yeah. calypso we'll talk about that but jackson you want to take <coughs> us out to the break a song side i want to hear the people say that now you could beat up a man by your bed. Side. Shoot down a bird on the hill. Side. Kill a boxer in the ring. Side. You can't touch a woman on the back. Side. <laughs> if I were to take over a government, I am sure I could bring the people contentment. If I were to take over a government, I am sure I could bring the people contentment because I would make certain changes so drastic. People would swear it was magic. I'd change it entirely. I would change up the system entirely. I would have a whopping minister for female affairs. <laughs> and this whopping minister won't be more than 20 years. All them hard up young men who can't get woman at all. Be wabi minister go fix them up free anytime they call. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's have a round of applause. Terra is regarded as the father of modern Calypso in St. Lucia. But Pep, you are the youngest of all, right? What do you have for us? Well, I, I'll sing um, something we did in 1989, Money Talks. Uh, because of how it relates to society. Because I've always, when I look back at some of my writings, I realize that it relates so much to what's happening today, you know? In my childhood days, in my simple ways, the world was so noble, everything was nice. Characters were sound, integrity was found, virtue was respected, so was sacrifice. What our. Invader, <laughs> <laughs> invader. <laughs> But the living world around me now is such an awful place. Nothing comes without a price. In our struggle for survival, corruption wins the race. Cheered on by the voice of vice. Money talks in a language clear and crisp. Money talks with a voice you can't resist. Money talks to the most virtuous man. Money talks and he'll compromise his plan. It speaks to every man of every culture in every land. Whispers if it's near or shouts if it's hard to hear. A universal tongue, it seduces the old and young. I'm sure you must agree that money talks persuasively. Whether work or play, whether night or day, to gain any success, there's a price to pay. Teachers will not teach, nor will teachers teach, if the price of money has nothing to say the parents of the students in the common entrance class they know no pay no pass so they pay for books and lessons then they pay for extra class but each year less brains more cash money talks with a voice you can't resist and I go so money talks what the virtuous man money talks to the most virtuous man money talks and he'll compromise his plan it speaks to every man of every culture in every land whispers if it's near or shouts if it's hard to hear a universal tongue it seduces the old and young i'm sure you must agree that money talks persuasively. In times, Calypso Monarch in St. Lucia ties with um, Terra. Who's going to overthrow who now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to make it to uh, the next stage? My money's on Pep. <laughs> Your money's on Pep. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, at this time, let me recognize the um, managing director of the um, Cultural Development Foundation, who is part of our audience. We also want to recognize Mr. Laforce, who is the Executive Director of the Folk Research Center. And we also have um, other Calypsonians and a journalist. So I'll introduce them to you because it's not too long. We have Black Pearl. Hi. Nice of you to be with us. Um, Lady Lynn. We have consultants, I would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Kennedy Boot Samuel, Cecil Charles, of course, of TOT. Thank you for joining us. Who else do I see here? We have journalist Tony Nicholas. We have Mr. Um, Teddy Francis, Mr. Sanchez. All, let me thank you very much for joining us. If you have any questions for the panelists, by all means, feel free to do so now. Any comments, observations? Well, 
Not you. Oh, not me. Well, while no. we wait, uh, okay, have something <laughs> good. <laughs> the living chassis. The living chassis. Well, chassis was a member of the veteran tent. I cannot recall what year it was, but I left chassis in charge of my tent and I went back to Trinidad for a while. I didn't learn at Piaco yet. Chassis had changed the name to Shaolin Temple. <laughs> <laughs> then, Invader and Lord help me come and take it away from him and call it Uprising. <laughs> and now the tent went to Soka Village. So this is the tent of the veterans that carried so much name. From the veterans to Shaolin Temple, to Shaolin Temple, to Soka Village. So when I come back, I had no choice to go and join Ambassador. ambassadors. Ambassador. And that is where I am always now. But Chassi, Chassi ap ap apart from, you know, the, uh, the story that you gave, he was a hardworking guy yes. in, in, in terms Chassi of used to be ensuring the one. that Calypsonians um, get to another level, I would say. Yes, Chassi was the one that is writing the board. Those days he used to work for Getty, yes. writing the board. So he used to write the board to for the tent, mm -hmm. in the names of the Calypsonians. He was... Well, the, when, the, when we formed the association, I was the first PRO, right? Then I pass it on to Chassis again. Mm -hmm. So Chassis carried PRO name for a long time in the association. Mm -hmm. Stayed there for a long time. And he always used to call me, Jackson, that's how you letting the fellas take over from you. So you, you are the head of the business. Why are you letting the fellas take over? I said, Chassis, let the fellas do their business, right? Mm -hmm. They want to run the business, let them run it. Okay? Now, I know that it is competition. Was there a competition um, mixed with rivalry, camaraderie? What was, it all, what was it like in terms of participating in Calypso competition in St. Lucia? With, okay, Jackson. With the veterans tent, it was camaraderie. Mm -hmm. There was nobody against nobody. It was together after... Despite the fact uh, that you were competing? After competition, no matter who it... Mm -hmm. I think Pep can tell you, when Pep won the first run, where you end up? Where? Well, by you? Okay, you end up by my own. <laughs> Prince, all of them oh, yeah. that win, they ended up by me. Okay. Right. Sarah, so for you, was, was it, was it yeah. the same? It was no, that no. way, yeah. No. It was when we started, yeah. Uh -huh. It was that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, because I remember, uh, well, let me give you a little story. The first, the first Calypso competition, the, the prize money was a grand, grand total of Fifteen dollars. <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's what I got as the prize. The prize money was fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. That was that was the prize money for the Calypso King. $15. So you're saying basically, and I would imagine Jackson too. It was for the love of the art oh, form. It was that for the love, the love, and the love. Um, uh, that fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. We had a, a party the whole night, you know, on that fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah, I paid. I paid the musician. That's and then like we had we a party. Write a Calypso on after that, that right? fifteen dollars, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And, but also at that time, say one, say the other, people like um, Reggie Clark and um, uh, Sammy Gage, is the people that maybe these people haven't heard of, they used to give their own personal checks to the, to the, mm -hmm. the winner. And their checks were bigger than the price. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, serious, Reggie gave me a, a check for $25 mm -hmm. and Gage gave me a check for $50, you know. So, we just put that all together, the band, we had a, we had a, we had a grand time, man. You know, and that's that how it used to, to be. For you? Yeah, well, because uh, you represent a different right. generation of um, Calypsonians. It was mixed uh, when I came in. I mean, uh, in the tent, there was, there was a lot of com um, uh, camaraderie in the tents, I must say. I, I, when I came in, I was well received in the tents. Um, Sha um, Shasi was the tent uh, my tent leader at the time. And as you said, quite rightly, he was a hard worker behind the scenes, you know. And sometimes they we wonder what time, little time he had to go and get his act, you know, to come on stage and perform mm -hmm. because he was really working very hard at the time. And he encouraged me a lot in the early stages uh, to, to, to stay in until f for one, two reasons I, I left and went to ambassadors, you know. But at that time, we had friends. But there was, there was rivalry among certain individuals. Mm -hmm. There's there some person, I found out there's some persons who took this Calypso competition so seriously. They, I mean, throughout the tent and then everybody drinking together, we having fun. And on the night of, when is it come to competition? 
You walk in there and you say hello to a guy, you refuse to shake your hand, you know. Yeah. No. Yeah, that, that, that. there was this thing going on, fellas wouldn't talk to you. Or you'd come and you see a fella in a corner by himself, isolating himself. And I used to find that very strange because, you know, I, I mean, as I'm a musician and to me it's all about music and just entertainment mm -hmm. and this sort of thing. And when I, when I saw that, I mean, I was a little taken aback by it because it was the first time I saw this sort of thing. But in general, I mean, that, that was about a, mm -hmm. a handful of persons. That's not a general yes, okay. thing. But among the tents we used to, I mean, when you go to a tent, I say uprising, go to ambassadors. At, at the end of the day, when tent finish, everybody by the bar having fun, drinking, giving each other jokes and this sort of thing, you know? Yeah. That's how it always how was it to was. me. Yeah. That's how it a was. Lot of, uh, good com um, camaraderie among, uh, among everybody. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. forget to tell him competition time backstage, you're taking all kind of smell. Yes, oh yeah, that's the other thing. All kind of funny smell. You're taking all kind of smell yeah. of all kind of portions when I'm backstage. And don't touch me. Yeah. And don't touch me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't touch me. Yeah. 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 Yes, we have a question from the audience. Yes, um, yes Mr. LaForce. <coughs> Uh, some and the night you come out and you're ready for the weather. How well, do you find this, that kind of uh, uh, situation compared to today? No, well, because Caro, Caro used to do that a lot. He would go through the band room and hum the song. He would not sing the words at all. Mm -hmm. But you can do that. It's a chance you're taking. When you reach on stage, George is listening to you and you make your mistake. You make your mistake. Right? When, when but when but if you... If you sing your song well to the judges, that's no problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I think the only person that's missing from the panel there is um, Pastor Jeff Elbow. I think really? he's six crowns. I like Sarah and Jackson and eventually Pep to shed some light on Philly's influence on the Calypso. I mean, I know Sarah actually um, wrote a tribute to Philly. Right? Yes, I, I, I did write a song and I'm a, uh, I, I thought, w that's when I came back, I, I wrote, when, when Pele died, I wrote the song, but I never got to sing it anyway, you know, and I'm a, uh, so right now I said, I said, well, maybe tonight I'll sing a, a, a verse and a, and a chorus just okay. for us to hear what I did, because I don't remember the, the, other, the rest of it, I have it written somewhere, you know. That'll be and good. Pele, Pele and and I were very good friends. So Pele was from Beaufort, I'm from Beaufort. And apart from that, Pele's uncle was my, was my, was my boops. <laughs> <laughs> I would call it, yeah, Pele's uncle, Pele had an uncle, um, Herbert Elva. That's, he was my, he was my, in, living in the house with my mother. A boopie. And, and that's, you know, and I grew up with him, you know. So we were very close, you know. And his mother, whose name was Marcella, they lived right next door. We, we lived right next door to each other, you know. So I knew Pele very well. We were very close friends, you know. And Pele was, we we're talking about competition now. When you see, it was just what Pep was saying. When it was our time in our competition, all of us were still friends. Some other guys, even up to the time of competition, some other guys used to come to Pele and myself and say, look, Tara, Pele, you know, I got a line there. I don't think I want to change that line. You think you would help me with that line? And we'll do it. You know, this sort of thing it used to happen. You know? So, and I, and I know that Pele used to write songs for some of the, some of the guys that used to compete against him. You know, I don't think he used to fix it for, for them to lose, but, <laughs> but you know, see, we used to do that. You know, this is a kind of, person that he was, that's how, that's how I knew him, you know, but, and the one thing I could tell you is that if we competed, he competed against me, you know, but he never beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to Jackson. Jackson, you had said that you are, were an, a, a bad lucky guy mm -hmm. in Calypso, but you won the crown in 1980-81, right? What was that feeling oh. like? when you actually, you know, uh, the crown was placed on your head. Well, as I told you, before I win that crown, I was getting a lot of problems. Microphone always okay. cutting out. <laughs> Until when Explainer wrote that song for me. 
from there things change. Mm -hmm. I start coming second, <laughs> right? I come second. Then after Sion come the picture now, he write a couple of songs for me. I continue getting a little position, a little second, a little third sometimes. And then when we come along with Guy Love Dance, that was a big hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at that time, a thousand five, you know, for the king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I want to know yeah. for you personally, mm -hmm. what did it feel like, for, you know, in terms of winning the crown? Well, because it you, was you were saying that all, all before that you were denied more or less, mm -hmm. but you win it now. Yes. Yes. Well, what do I feel that I showed them? I start by showing them. You all cutting microphone on me, so I'm doing something about it now. Mm -hmm. And it stopped from there. Okay. Okay? Now I say I win. I'm the champion now. Mm -hmm. Look me. So you felt master. good? Yes, well okay. good, man. Okay. Who, you would, <laughs> if you were my shoe, you wouldn't feel good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, there's something I wanted to see before you end. Um, well, while Lorna was president and so on, so, uh, my little boy, Mattis, he liked Calypso a lot. Right, yes. Mantis. So, Mantis. Uh, so I started telling Lona last so let us organize a junior Calypso competition. And there was some Calypso saying, No, I'm Jackson. His son, he want to win. His son could sing Calypso and thing. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, but my son could sing Calypso. Your son could sing too. Make your son sing. Right? And then after about five years later, they organized the junior Calypso mm -hmm. competition. Then Matis come and win. Then he became the first junior Calypso King in St. Yes, Lucia. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right? And then when he went back to defend, they say he's too old. Chiki went and win. <laughs> and only to find out Chiki, Chiki was one year older than him. <laughs> so from that, the boy say he finished with that. That is why Matis finished with that. He say yes again, the people to buy us. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Chiki was older than Matis. Right? But uh, we will admit that the Junior Calypso competition has grown to the point oh, yes, oh, where yes, oh, it's yes. now performed in, in well, schools all again, over St. Lucia primary again, as well as secondary. There again, Mr. Jerry, I'm feeling proud mm -hmm. because all this is me who say let us do it. You know, it's me who started and it's growing and growing and growing. Today I'm happy to see the Calypso improving in St. Lucia. Yes. Even though I ain't winning, I ain't placing, but <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> But I want to ask you, what has kept you? Because of the three persons mm -hmm. on the panel, you are the one who have stuck to it for the last 60, 60 plus years. Well, because I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can't play football. I can't play cricket. I love cricket, but I cannot play cricket. I can't box. <laughs> so that's my game. But, are, but aren't you more or less, I will say, um, feel out, out of it well, because of the, to the, tell you know, you the, the truth, type of... Um, to tell you the truth. I am planning to step out because I was very, very, very mad with two people. I called their name. Three of them on TV, on TV, just before Calypso competition there. And one, the two of them actually said, um, it's time for people like um, the veterans to step out of Calypso, give the young people a chance. About I find that these fellas should not be saying that. And Liam, Jean Baptiste, is one, and um, Bernard Panis, mm -hmm. these two. And Lord help me said to them, help me was there with them. Why are you all saying that? You all cannot say that the veterans have, you know, the, the young ones have to learn from the veterans. Why, why, why are you saying that? And I well, I'm, them sure, I'm sure they must have been saying that out of, you know, like a joke. No, but I think know? that's serious. But, uh, because I will leave it here. for them. Huh? You I'll, leave for I'll leave it for them. <laughs> but I think St. Lucia is generally very, yeah. very um, grateful yeah. for your contribution to well, Calypso and what you have done in terms of getting it at a, a different level, a different direction. The, govern, the government of St. Lucia has recognized me. Yes. They have given me what I deserve yes. to get. So I have it so I can finish it. Okay, when so I could die, you, could you when sing, I die, they will stick with me. Could you sing your winning song for 1981? My winning song, I cannot really remember all, but I can tell you, it was proclamation. Leave home your ratchets, guns and cutlass. Forget violence, let we play we must. Fellas from Canway, Pulasho and the graveyard. Just for peace, we go make them special police. That was written by Sion. <laughs> yeah. So I did not win crown with Guy Love. A lot of people believe yeah, I win the crown with the Guy Love. Match, right, yes. I win the road match and I play second, which I felt I should have been getting First. a double header. Okay. 
right? <laughs> but it was taken away from me again. <laughs> but the song that they put in front of me, they, I had not heard it nowhere. <coughs> but Guy Love don't stick there, mm -hmm. year after year. Indeed, indeed. Any, any more questions from the audience? Yeah. yeah um, going back to the Zandori terror, I don't think you were... Oh, I see, right, yeah. yes. But before you go on, um, as monarchs, kings of Calypso, do you think that you are given enough recognition? I'm not an the night you win finals and so on, but at events. So, for example, I've noticed at the Calypso finals and so on, you'll see the Carnival Queen with all the Carnival mm -hmm. contests and maybe ten of them, sorry, seven, eight of them, but the whole lot of us, yeah, and so on. But as the Calypso King, you ever invited to, for example, be the one presenting the crown? For the second place runner at the Carnival Queen Show, or whatever the case may be. Do you all feel slighted by the fact that you all are not involved? It, it in used situation. to happen in the early days. The king would have been singing on the at king, the queen show. king and queen of the band show, and, and also show. at the queen show. But now, yeah. for some reason, it's not happening. Calypsonians, for instance, pepped with the king for 50 years, I think. But every show you will hear Invader. He have to be there. Look the king there. He's not there at all. You know that is the evolution of it. You know. So your question is answered. Things have changed. Things yes, have changed. It, has changed, it has changed considerably. I mean, yeah. he's quite right. I remember in the in the eighties and early nineties when I won, King and Queen of the Band Queen Show and all other shows, even after Carnival, the yeah. king would at least sing. Anybody you know, in those days, you used to have a, a fast and a slow. So you come and sing your fast song and then your slow song, and, and at least for a few months after. Yeah. But for the last few years, I don't know when, like, I've always said, when I sing at a show, when I sing at finals, it's not until finals next year. Yeah. Now I'm not going to beg anybody to go and sing for them, you understand what I mean? But nobody invites you to any show. I mean, that, that's what goes on. For example, when you are from Monarch, you'll have a kind of queen, okay, coming and um, from you. Has that we, we, we both in the sense that the carnival, the carnival monarch has ever been the one to crown. To crown the king? The monarch. The carnival queen to crown the Oh, no, that has never happened. No, no, that don't happen. You just perform at the queen show and that's it. It was the same thing. So what do you think about that? that if, the fact that, for example, what I'm saying is that carnival queen, with all the other contestants, are given that high privilege VIP thing at the Calypso competitions, but it doesn't happen for the Calypsonian, whether it is, for example, like that Jackson, does he ever get an invitation for the national competition, even if he's not competing? No. Nope. Sarah, have you ever been invited? No, no, no. Not even to the Calypso competition. Not even so, that so I think what you're saying is that there needs to be a different set of um, recognition or additional recognition the same way other entities of the, of the carnival mm -hmm. is are recognized, recognized and they are given that let, let, let me tell you highlight and so, so to the Calypso monarch should be given that kind of privilege too okay mm -hmm. Sandoli, I, I one thing one thing I must I will say that's the one thing is like you said anytime you win the crown you should be invited to sing at, at, at the queen show that 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 that, that, that was up to uh, even at night time. That's all you know. You know now that's not the happening. King, the monarch, the Calypso monarch, would sing at the at the carnival thing. But Zandoli, um, sorry, by Tara, I think what he means is that apart from that, no, 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 we I shouldn't wait. Uh, he shouldn't wait until the next um, crowning no. for um, for the for the Calypso monarch to be involved in things cultural or Calypso. No, no, I understand. I, I understand. Okay. I'm just right. telling him that that used to happen even uh, in my time. Okay. Know? So All it right. hasn't changed. There was the years the Calypso King would be invited to Antigua, mm -hmm. but all that stopped. All that stopped. Not happening again. Now I promised that we would go back to um, the year you and Zandoli more or less clashed for the winning of the mm -hmm. crown, right? Um, could you do you remember this can you can you tell us about it because it's a, it, it's pivotal because it says that it was a result of the results that, that you sort of moved away 
from um, being involved in local Calypso? Well, uh, <coughs> at that time, during in those times, we didn't have any association or anything like this. Mm -hmm. You know, to, when it came to the, the time of the competition, we organized, everybody came together and we organized the competition. And, you know, we select people to, you know, prominent people to, to be judges. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody from the police band. There's always somebody from the police band. Or, I remember Fahoui was one of the first who was in Carnival and he was always. But that year, you know, I mean, you know, fellas took that because it was still thing we did all this thing, you know, it was really a fun thing for us, for everybody, you know. And Salas so decided that he was going to, to select the judges. And he selected um, Howick. Howick Elcock. Elcock, right, yeah. And Elcock selected St. Helen. Mm -hmm. Now that time there were two judges. They said they, they, for the, ju for the they said the two of them will, will judge. It. They only did wow. two judge. The two of them will judge. Black. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. But you know at that time nobody was because everybody, you know. So on the night of the competition, I remember that competition was at the town hall. Mm -hmm. It was at the town hall, and boy, well, we were singing two calypsos at that time. So we were still saying two calypsos. And both of them were, both of them used to be judged. Both calypsos. When after the first round, everybody said, well, we there with every and you know, in this thing after we finish, everybody go at the back and and and, and train, train together and say, Boy, I think I won that first round, you know. I think, I think so. And uh, everybody saying, Well, I think Terra won that first round. Terra win that first round. The second round come and fell when the second round after after everybody said, but fellas were betting. The Calypso and themselves were betting as to who they think that place one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. That name wasn't there at all. Tando wasn't there at all. The Calypso and themselves didn't were betting. His name wasn't there at all. Nobody betting on him to win. Because first to begin with, his first song was not even a, uh, was not an original song, you know, and then he sang another song, which was kind of smutty, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so, but Lucy, something else. But what I want to find out is, uh, did this really um, tipped you off to move away from? No, 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 because okay. I, I sang again after, uh, the following year. All right, I sang again the following year, okay. and there were the same two judges. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, at that time, people we don't worry about these things. That, that I, I figured, we're, I, I guess we were a bit naive at that time also, mm -hmm. you know. And I say, well, I, 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 you know, I was doing it for the fun. Well, of it. thank you so much for clearing it, clearing it up. We have Jackson. Will take us. You have another song that you want to perform for us. Which one you want? Which one we we we, we did? Yeah. Up to you. Uh, I don't know how many people in here know about Gitty and Clark. Gitty and Clark. Clark, Gitty and Clark Cinema. The two cinemas, right? All right. Oh. Well, if I have a choice, I'll sing another one instead. <laughs> I'll sing another one. Pa pe pa pa de da de de pa pa pa. It have a thing some mothers does do. Believe me or not, I'll tell it to you. You got any key? It have a thing some mothers does do. Believe it or not, I'll tell it to you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, I'll start with the chorus. Anytime I like a girl is just like that. Me I want to know if she is a jagabat. As long as I make sure she could do the things to make me feel good, I go organize with she and to hell with society. You get it now? It have a thing some others does do. Believe it or not, I'll tell it to you. It have a thing some others does do. Believe me or not, I'll tell it to you. Anytime that you love a lady, they want to know who she family. And if the father do something wrong, 
He's a criminal in this town. I tell you, anytime I like a girl, is just like that. Me want to know if she is a jagabat. As long as I make sure she could do the things to make me feel good, I go organize with she and to hell with society. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jackson, thank you and thank you for the contribution that you have made to Calypso in Sanusha. In fact, you're credited for bringing structure to Calypso in terms of the tents. And I think it has lasted for, for 60 years. And we see improvements, we see challenges, but we continue the journey. May I ask the audience a yes. question? Yes, okay, ask the audience a question. My audience, do you think I should continue in Calypso or go and sleep? <laughs> <laughs> what? Continue. You say well, so? <laughs> Anyhow, since, since Jackson has opened the floor for questions from you, if you have, if you wish to ask of any of the three gentlemen to sing one of your favorite songs, we hope that we can accommodate you. Um, I, was, I was looking forward to hearing um, Terry sing the song he composed for Felix. Oh, oh yeah, the yes. one verse. Yeah, I'll sing the one verse. I could do that. And then. Well, while Tara, uh, um, Tara and Martin are searching for the right notes, mm -hmm. I just want to go to you, Pep. Um, in terms of what, I mean, you are in the modern era of, of Calypso. Um, from what you have seen over the years that you've been participating, do you think we're headed in the right direction? Is there something that we need to sort of change? Well, to make it better um, or to, to remove ourselves from in order to give Calypsonians you know, a, a, a better chance? Well, it's a, very, it's a very difficult thing. My concern at the moment is really the structure and organization of, the, of, the, of, of Calypso in terms of the tents and the, the, the bigger competitions. It is through no fault, in, I find now, of the Calypsonians because, I mean, the cost of production of shoes are uh, astronomical. It's, it's, it's not like before, when you know everybody come, you, you get you got sponsors willing to give, and you organize tents and so forth. It's become very difficult and very expensive, and now ev <coughs> everybody wants to grab. Everybody wants a piece of the pie, and you find sometimes when you look at what's happening, the Calypsonians are almost pushed you aside, where a lot of concentration is uh, is on production. You know, people want to come in and charge big money to do lighting, big money for sound, big money for this. And then the Calypsonians, who are supposed to be the center of the, of, the, of the Calypso entertainment, almost pushed aside and we cannot make demands for what we want. We cannot, I mean, for example, one thing we've been having a problem with is, for example, the, 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 the prize money. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can remember, sometime in 2000, I mean, I won a car some, in 2002, and at that time it was $35,000. Well, it was a vehicle, and you got some money to insure the vehicle. And in 2017, and it's, it's the same price as 2000, that's, so we're looking almost of all these years gone by. And every time we make an, uh, the Calypsonians come together to make an appeal to at least do something that give, to encourage people to go ahead with it, we always get a slap in the face and, and you know. We have other people who are involved in the management and production ask whatever price they get for things and they get it without any, without any problem. So in that sense, the Calypsonians, although they are the center of the, of the, of the entertainment uh, and, and so forth, they are not, as far as I see it, having the benefit financially or otherwise with regards to you know, the, 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 the thing. But having said that, I, I think it is important that we get the Calypso Association back mm -hmm. and get persons to manage the Calypso platform because I don't think it is right for us to be, to be depending on government year after year because when you do that, you can't bargain. If you have to depend on persons to put, pump money into something that you are not involved in, then you can't face them to bargain with them for what you want. So you are, you are almost at the mercy of these persons. So, but what is the holdback for the formation of a, a, a thriving Calypso Association? Well, to be, I, it's a, 
a multiplicity of problems. But I think it started back when the association fell through because of financial reasons. As, you men as um, Jackson mentioned, um, the, I mean, we had a fat bank account at some point, and over a period of time that went down to the drain. And since then, persons don't want to, persons were not wanting to put themselves forward to manage the Calypso. It was a problem getting persons, mm -hmm. you know, to stay in the forefront and uh, to, to, you know, to head the association and actually form that structure. And what you saw, so what you saw happening is that the different tents were beginning to come together. Those who are real serious and interested in the art form coming together, putting their heads together to at least keep the tents alive and, and hence, you know, to keep the, the Calypso going. Mm -hmm. So it has to be the, the heads of certain tents alongside um, private citizens, you know, um, the, the Calypso management committees and these things that have been coming together. So I, I, I'm not sure if what, what, well, I'm not sure if, if it's that persons are frightened to be involved in an association that has, that, 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 you know, that has in a sense gone down the drain. And, but we need to have persons who are serious about the art form. It doesn't have to be Calypsonians, but persons with management skills, yeah. but at least have an interest in, in, in it. To come together to try and keep it alive and help structure it because the Calypsonians themselves, I've even got the individual Calypsonians, they don't have those skills. Mm -hmm. They don't have the management skills, they don't have the skills, this sort of thing. And so they're not able to get that structure place among themselves. But there are persons who have the skills, who are able, who have an interest in Calypso personally and so on, who I think, I mean, if all we have, we have together, some right in the audience and we hope exactly. that they will take on so the challenge. So if they can take up the it, challenge, yeah. and yes. then things will be good. Tara, Martin, you ready for us? Yeah. Yes, okay, let's go. The one, um, Maybe one thing I, I want to um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what the, the one part of the chorus I'd like the, the, the audience to join in, and it's the, the, the words are, Pele pass away, you know when it's coming. Yeah. It was a sad day in St. Lucia, yes, the death of a master. It was a sad day in St. Lucia, oh God. Death of a master. When I got the news that Pele really died, I had to sit down and cry. The greatest man in Calypso in St. Lucia history was gone to eternity. So let we moan and pray. Yes, Pele passed away. Calypsonians cried that day when Pele passed away. He was a man of Calypso, and everywhere he go, everyone would agree. Now that is gone from this world, let me pray that his soul will be blessed by the Almighty. That's good, that's good, that's good, I like it. Thank you, thank you, Tara. We don't have much time left, but it has been a very productive, very informative um, experience this afternoon. And I am thankful for you um, turning up and joining us and sharing your experiences and also to bridge the gap in terms of the history of Calypso making in St. Lucia. We hope you'll come back again. Well, I, would, I, would, another, I wouldn't miss this for the world. I, I love it. I really, I really yeah. enjoyed being here this afternoon. Yes, well, we well, well, part. Well, I really did not know what I was I coming into. I I I've been wanting to see Pep since he, since he tied the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and just so he knew that I was rooting for him on that night. <laughs> well, let me just, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much to the audience. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for taking time off to be, to be with us. And these distinguished gentlemen, including Mr. Martin James, who kindly agreed to accompany our Calypsonians. Gentlemen, again, our country, the foundation that you have laid has been um, something that is worthy of respect. And of course, I, I think that you've been honored for your contribution in some form or fashion. If not, um, we will ensure that it happens. Thank you very much for being part of this special discussion. And um, happy St. Cecilia's Day. We'll see you next year. One Sunday morning about six o'clock, right at me back do I heard someone knock. When I saw who it was, I was really surprised. Guy looked with small black and red bloodshot eyes.
He starts to explain in his own peculiar way. <laughs> I have an offer for you today. Don't say I'm a fool, but Jack won't give me a chance. Let me teach you my special dance. I want to start. <laughs> Doing the guy love dance. 